On a sunny Saturday, September morning, I joined a tour organized by Heritage Regina. We met up at 100-year-old Connaught School in Regina's Cathedral area and drove about 45 minutes west to the city of Moose Jaw to see three historic schools. I wanted to see how these schools had fared during the past 100 years. At Prince Arthur School on Stradcona Street, we met Darren Baton, facilities manager for Prairie South Schools, and Mike Boys, facilities supervisor. See that the Duke of Connaught laid the cornerstone for this building in 1912, but when you do look up, you will see 1913. That is when this building officially opened. One of the things Darren and I were talking about when we were here is the amount of time that it took to build these buildings. Not only because of the fact of the technologies they had, but also they were building buildings to last a very, very long time. Their life expectancies were a long time. As Darren mentions, our time frame on a building now is how many, how many months, Darren? Yeah, it's probably eight, eight months. You eight have months. the manpower, it's in and out the door. You don't see the quality of workmanship like you did before. All computers, etc. and so forth, you know, it could compare to most schools anywhere. So come on in out of the cold and we welcome you. The entranceway showed some of the beautiful tile work and woodwork. You can tell it's been well cared for. There's been several upgrades in recent decades. The most noticeable improvement was unplugging the windows that had been bricked over in the past. Natural light has flooded back into the building. Many schools bricked up windows during the 70s, thinking it would save costs and reduce student distractions. But thinking in technology has changed. With his new windows, Prince Arthur is remarkably energy efficient costing just $70,000 annually in utilities for a 4,200 square meter building. Suzanne Vance, the school's Opportunities for Learning teacher, showed us some classrooms. The early learning room is what's called a Reggio classroom. This means the furnishings are natural materials, not plastic or synthetic. There was a small bathroom with sink in the classrooms. We were amazed to find such a large computer lab space in an older mid-sized school. Here's a prime example where you've got daylight coming in. If it's affecting computers, you can close your blinds that way, but still give it that open natural. And it's, it's so nice educational-wise because the, the students can look out and see the old brickwork yeah, and see well, the nature with it. The school does have a VoIP intercom system. What it is is a voice over internet telephone system. So the intercoms are done right through the computers, the telephone systems. And then we did a renovation of the exterior stairs. Roughly a $2 million reno has been since 2006. The biggest upgrades are the things you can't see. Back in the 70s, a rear entrance was added that caused water to pour through the basement when it rained. Years of damp and mold made the building unhealthy for kids. Beginning in 2005, the whole basement was gutted and rebuilt. Bobcats even drove right under the school. Kindergarten to grade 2 students learned in the gym, while the older kids were split among three other schools for a year. The basement and other upgrades totaled $1.8 million dollars and the kids came back to a renewed school. One kid didn't come back, though. Mrs. Vance told us that the ghost of a crying child was never seen again after the school was put back the way it used to be. Next stop, King George School, which opened on November 11th, 1911. Yeah, that's right, three elevens. One thing that was different from Prince Arthur was the windows. Here they decided to revert to the original pane configuration rather than large sheets of glass. I'm told this retains the original quality of light and shadow that the designer intended. They made good use of the generous attic space to keep equipment that would normally be outside on the roof and not much fun to fix in minus 40 weather. The school grounds have some really nice features nestled in a heritage neighborhood that has been the source of the school's regeneration. You know, why do you get to keep it open, et cetera, and so forth. And now, it's just about at capacity or a little bit over. And it's because of the fact being that new families moved into a number of the heritage homes in this area, and it's resurrected itself. 
King George students commemorated their renovation year with plaques naming all the students who had gone on buses for the year. They came back to a school in their neighborhood that was ready for the next 100 years. Mr. Boyce says he's a convert to heritage schools for the value they bring to students and community. The whole idea of it is, is we had, for example, we did a gym floor renovation. I had a lady come into our building. She gave me a check for $15 who played women's basketball in A.E. Peacock Collegiate in 1934. And then still, so when you have that history, and I introduced her to some of the students, you know, that, that carry through is a sense of community community is immense. Next stop, one of Moose Jaw's oldest and grandest buildings, 103-year-old Central Collegiate. It's a school where old meets new. The office is new, for example, but they chose oak furnishings and trim to reflect the building's history. The hallways also reflect pride in the past. In addition to computer labs and classrooms, there's a spacious shop area. Terrazzo floors have stood the test of time. This style of ceiling vault has been in use since Roman times. With $425,000 for upgrades in 2009, the priority was an elevator and an accessible link from old to new. There wasn't enough money to unplug all the windows, but a few classrooms benefited from more light. When money is tight, it's all a matter of priorities. According to Mr. Baton, until you open up a foundation wall and look with your own eyes, you can't know if a school is repairable or not. With amalgamation, Prairie South took over schools in seven divisions, all in varying states of repair, according to how much attention was paid to them over the years. But a lot of the motivation is if you can have good skilled tradesmen on the lower end that, and you just keep a program going, when it breaks, fix it. If it gets damaged, fix it and just stay up on the little areas like you don't. We do a lot of it in-house. We try and do a lot of it in-house to one, the way the industry is right now, it's hard to get tradesmen. They're all over other areas of the province and they are making good money. There's no doubt about that. I'm a tradesman myself. But if you can just keep it in-house and keep a continual preventative maintenance program going, if you can... But it's got to keep some direction from the top too, though. Yep. If there's no will to yep. keep the... But it's building. getting tougher and tougher with the money. You know, you have to look at square footage within your division and how much can you actually keep hmm. up. Mr. Boys and Mr. Baton explain that the province's funding and space allocation formula does become an inducement favoring new replacements because, for example, the way to get a performing arts space these days is to double purpose it with an open classroom. Although I wonder how the acoustics would compare. Clearly, there are some challenges, but a few things struck me. 45 minutes outside Regina, renovations cost in the millions, not tens of millions. In Moose Jaw, planning is done locally and in-house, instead of by multinational consulting firms. Moose Jaw's heritage schools are similar in size, age and construction to Regina's older schools. They've obviously been good stewards. One thing we learned about Moose Jaw is that folks there are super friendly, welcoming and forthcoming. Mrs. Vance even invited us to come back and check on her school when the kids are there so we would know what it's really like. We had a great day. Thank you so much.